With the school day done, the forest school groups gather for their final snack on the lawn. The macaque monkeys are back. They know this is peak hour for scavenging. One little macaque attracts three-year-old Meryl's interest. She tries making friends with him. She's one of the most sociable orangutans in her class. It's the abundance of food here that makes these sorts of interspecies encounters possible. In the wild, it's all about competition for resources. More leisure time can lead to unusual friendships. Suddenly, Madara is getting all the attention from Meryl's new friend. But she has a trick to win him back. The macaque seems bemused. But a friendship is born. All the classes hang out together during afternoon playtime. Six-year-old Barlian draws a crowd of youngsters impressed by his coconut opening technique. Once again, three-year-old Merrill thinks he should share. Valentino finishes up his day in the sandbox and immediately snatches Malika's bamboo tube. He plays with it in exactly the same way a human kid would. Lazy Benny's too busy snacking to join in. Poor Malika makes the most of her sand. But maybe Valentino has a big heart after all. Now there are two sand toys. It's been a momentous day for Clara and baby Clarita. The mum has been holding her infant close all afternoon as they renew their bond. Clarita is exceptionally lucky. The fact that she has her mother gives her a huge advantage over the orphans here at Jungle School. Clara plays with her baby just like a human mother would, leaving little doubt that this bond is as strong as ever, despite their dramatic ordeal. At Bungamut Island in the Rungan River, the capture team still has work to do before they lose light. They've just darted 15-year-old Stuart. Stuart's been at jungle school since he was orphaned as a one-year-old. Now he too has a chance at living free in the wild. <laughs> Don't drop 
It's almost time to head back to base. But then, the eagle-eyed vet spies Roo, a 15-year-old female also on the candidate list. But she doesn't stick around. So the sniper decides to follow her into the forest. And the vet scans the trees. When suddenly, all hell breaks loose. A huge, aggressive 16-year-old male named Casper charges out of the jungle, sending the Technisi scrambling into a place Casper can't follow them. Casper is also on the candidate list, so veterinarian Argus preps sedative darts for this unexpected appearance, while the swimmers distract the massive male. Casper was brought to Niaru Menteng when he was just 18 months old. As he progressed through jungle school, he ruled the classroom hierarchy. Now, after forming his large fleshy cheek pads and throat sack, and fighting off the competition, he's become the dominant male on Bungamut Island. Being the king on this pre-release island is good news for Casper now. But there's a catch if he's going into the wild. A new home range will mean new males competing for dominance and females. So, if Casper wants to keep his status, he'll have to re-establish himself as the king. His aggression towards the Technisi is similar to how he would have to behave towards new adult males. So for now, this is excellent practice. The sniper's ready. But he misses his mark. And Casper doesn't give him a second chance. The capture team has only one option. To pursue the aggressive male back into the forest. It doesn't take long to find him. The stakes are high for this shot. If the sniper misses, the team's safety will be at risk. With the strength of seven men, an angry Casper is potentially lethal. He's dead on. But something's wrong. Casper advances again. Pumped up with adrenaline, it seems they'll need a stronger sedative to take down the 200-pound male. But darting him again so soon could be dangerous for the big guy. So the team decides to wait until tomorrow. Hey, Love Nature fans. Be sure to like and subscribe to catch all our wild animal stories. Get closer to nature right here on YouTube.